We did ourselves proud at Old Trafford, but now attention turns back to the bread and butter of League One football. 9,000 of you went to Manchester to witness a performance that was full of passion, commitment and desire. We need more of the same today against Barnsley and, of course, for the rest of the season. Barnsley have actually lost their last two games in all competitions, but in the league they are one of the division's form sides, winning six of their last eight. That means that they are in a playoff place at present and they do have two games in hand on some of their promotion rivals. We've got lots to come ahead of kickoff here on Charlton TV. We'll hear exclusively from manager Dean Holden, who I spoke to a little earlier this afternoon. We dipped into the January transfer market for the first time early this week. So we'll hear from the new recruits, Macaulay Bond and Todd Kane. And we'll also hear from youngster Lucas Ness, who added Manchester United to the list of teams that he's impressed against recently on Tuesday night. Well, Curbs is on holiday again. <laughs> and he goes away again in a month. <laughs> it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. So alongside Brownie and myself, we're delighted to say we have someone who actually boasts a really good record on Charlton TV. Yes, Ali, sir. do you know how many points you've got out of how many? I'm, I'm seven points from three games. Wins, wins against Exeter, Derby, and last season draw against Rotherham, who came here having won five out of six and just beaten Sunderland 5-1. So hoping to bring some more luck today. I should have known, shouldn't I? Ali Maxwell from Not A Top 20 podcast. He knows exactly the, uh, the performance he's had so far. Ali, great to see you. How are you? I'm very, very well. Uh, busy start to the year. Been getting out to quite a lot of games and good to be at another one today. I think in League One terms, there's one huge fixture at the top of the division mm. with Argyle and Ipswich going head to head. But outside of that, this is a game that I'm hugely intrigued by an improving Charlton to my eyes up against a very, very solid side in Barnsley. Yeah. For, for those who, I mean, I don't know who doesn't know about you and George as well, but for those who, who don't know about the podcast, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Brownie, you ever listen? I have. Uh, no, I have, <laughs> but not to a whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, one day we'll get Brownie to listen to a whole episode. Uh, and, and, and listen, if you're only going to listen to one, listen to the one that just before the season starts, the way they go through each division, <laughs> it, it's incredible. Well, I, just sitting next to Ali and listening and even over in the lounge just earlier, uh, there's no point in competing stats wise, just off you go Ali and I'll, I'll come in once the game starts. <laughs> we're very passionate, my mate, my mate George and I, we're very passionate about the EFL, all three leagues from champ down to League Two. Um, and we've been doing it for about seven years now, so it's, uh, it's been incredible really. Uh, when we started there was, uh, to our eyes, in terms of a show that provided EFL fans with the same sort of insight and passion and analysis that Premier League fans get week to week all the time we didn't think that existed so we wanted to at least try and provide something going towards that it's difficult to do um, but uh, yeah it's basically just two mates talking about football and, and kind of living our dream with some of the opportunities that we've had including sitting here with you guys sounds like me and brownie two mates sitting here <laughs> talking about football as well i mean the brownie got a touch on it curves in barbados we're not jealous, are well, we? Well, and he keeps sending us these pictures of him by the pool. Well, not him in it, but, but the pool, every swimming pool he sits in it. Oh, I'd have a picture of this, boys. No, I'm not. No, leave me alone. <laughs> I've got to go sit. I've, I've had to make my way. You wouldn't be by the down. pool even if you were in Barbados. Well, I wouldn't have a tail over me. You just see my, my chin and my head. I think Alan Kelly actually having a good selfie game is, is, oh, is a good, good thing yeah. to learn at the top yeah. of the show. <laughs> he is making us jealous as he's sending the pictures Absolutely. on a daily basis as well. Uh, look, Brownie, Ali and, and co host George have recently selected their 21 hottest prospects in the EFL recently for Sky Sports. Yeah. Mentioned a, a young Charlton player. Can you guess who that might be? <laughs> Yeah, I think we got a couple. I, I think, think we got, got a, a couple. I think we got a couple. I totally of, agree. Uh, yeah, I think we got a couple on the way, and uh, if they can continue in the, in, in the, the run of form they're in and progress uh, in their development, I think we've got two or three actually mm. in the making. So we'll see. But yeah, the one that sticks out like a sore thumb. I just said over the lounge. I said, look, you can you can be interested in him. You can even make an offer if you want, but you've got to get past Tracy and Carl first. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think you're getting past them you know before what? the summer. Carlo's six foot four and he, he, he's been a bit of a former roommate of mine here at Charlton, but Tracy's the one I'd be scared of. So, oh, uh, God, 100%. <laughs> uh, but why, why uh, tell us what, what, for you, puts not, uh, Miles in that position. Scoring six goals in your first, I think it was about 600 senior league minutes is, is always going to have you pretty high up on the shortlist and then you know when we're shortlisting all of the, the young talent in the EFL you know you, you're gathering who's really impacting games at senior level is very very important and then you, you, you want to watch as much as you can and, and with Lee Byrne, it was 
you know, you start with the numbers and then you watch the game and what you see makes you probably more impressed than you were just on the numbers alone because of his size. But the goal that we saw when I was last here against Exeter where he took the ball so well, his, his first two touches were so slick and smooth and then he dipped inside and finished. And it was, it was so eye-catching. Um, since then, I've seen some other really important parts of a striker's game, even in the last two. Um, Link-up play in the last two home games, for sure. There was a back heel in the build-up to a chance early against Lincoln. Obviously, you know, in assisting the goal for Fraser, he shows sort of classic centre-forward knockdown. Then he spins and runs the channel, uses his pace, and then picks out a man at the far post. It's just brilliant all-round play. So um, it was an absolute no-brainer to have Lee Byrne in. There are some talented, talented young strikers in the EFL. One who plays for Bristol Rovers on loan from Borough called Coburn. Uh, those two at the moment, for me, are, are really ones to watch in terms of young strikers with all-round skill set and size and speed um, and really ones to watch. But hopefully, in terms of Miles, at Charlton for, for as long as possible, I guess. So many things to like about Miles. Yeah. I love the push on Harry Maguire. <laughs> he did about three or four. That was brilliant. Did, do you know what? He went toe-to-toe -to -toe physically with him. Yeah. And actually, off the ball, put him on the, on the ground three Absolutely. or four times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, experience he's going to be a might very, very that. strong boy yeah, in a I love years. that. Look, Brandon, you've got to say, back-to-back -back wins in the league and a really enjoyable performance with a lot of credit taken out of Manchester United. Got to take that forward ahead of today's game, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, imperative. Actually, you know, and, and, and maybe there is just a little bit of slight lacking of confidence in Barnsley, which is strange to say with the run of form they've been on, but they've been forced into changes today, such as the last two results. And they've, they've been a very consistent side. They've not made many changes to their lineup over the last sort of month, month and a half. And today we're going to see a few changes. So mm. maybe, maybe we're catching them maybe just at the right time. We'll see. But we have, we have had a very physical game during the week. That might have an impact as well. Alan, just before we move on, were you at the training ground yesterday? I, I didn't make it to the training you ground in the end. Um, there was a plan to, to go down and, and see the players being put through their paces. But I figured after the, the long trip on Tuesday night and crucially some new faces through the door, I felt like everyone from Dean and his staff, the players and, and the media team as well have had a pretty busy week. So mm. uh, we'll, we'll reschedule that for another time. But yeah, time, I'd love yeah. to come and visit. Absolutely, I'm sure you will do just that. OK, let's move on. We're already over, by the way, Brownie, just to let you no know. No surprise there, mate. Just, just the four minutes. Just so four? Yeah. We're only five minutes yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> let's hear from the manager, Dean Holden. I have to say, he's really turned things around, hasn't he? You know, I spoke to a little bit earlier. Dean, back at the Valley after what was a brilliant outing at Old Trafford, my first question is, are you getting 50-odd tickets for today as well? <laughs> Only three today. <laughs> Dad, my dad's down, my brother, and they brought my son down with them. So, uh, not as many down here today, but uh, no, it's important that we, that we use that, that feeling that we got the other night. We, we come out of it with a lot of credit, I think. The players gave everything, the supporters certainly played their part as well. So, I said it all week, we have to back it up now. You know, well, you can't be, can't be flat today, we need to make sure we bang at it. Absolutely, on a serious note to that, you know, how important is it that the lads apply that same mentality? Easy to get up for Man U away, the top class players do it all the time, don't they? Yeah, that's, that's what we said to them. And uh, this is the biggest game now because it's our next game and, it, and we know what, what's at stake in terms of you know, where Barnsley are on the table, where we are, with the little run that we've been on. So keep pushing every day. Man United's gone for me, simple as that. We addressed it with the players, loads of good clips. And like in every game, win, lose or draw, we, we reflect and we analyse where we could improve as well. So we keep a balance on the, on the performance. Uh, but we come with it with some confidence, that's the main thing. And uh, it's going to be a quick pitch by the looks of it out there. So we'll have to play the conditions to an extent. But I freshened the team up in, in certain areas, I think, which was probably needed. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. So what, what is the line-up today and, and how, much did, sort of how much it took out of them, both mentally as well, well as physically? certain players from Tuesday. You all know yourself, it's difficult to gauge, if I'm being totally honest with you. There's no machine that says like, he needs a rest. And obviously, we had conversations and, and whatever else through the last couple of days, but um, emotionally as well as physically, it was a, it was a, t it was a big night. So uh, I've, brought, I've sort of balanced it off with, I've, I've, I've freshened up each unit of the pitch on, on each side. So Todd comes in for his debut at right back to replace Sean Clare. Uh, Jack Payne comes into midfield for Albie Morgan. And then on the left, uh, we've gone with uh, Tyrese Campbell to replace Corey Blackett Tail. So we've tried to give a little bit of balance to the to the whole team. So didn't want to make too many changes because sometimes you can make too many and lose that bit of cohesion which arguably we've had in the last few games you know through the chemistry of the players performing with each other and building them relationships. No, it, it is a fine balance and yeah, I think we both know what it's like playing after a big game emotionally it is difficult to gauge. So I can understand where you're going with that. In terms of the, the sort of academy graduates, there were four that played up at United. How impressed have you been with the youngsters since you've come in? 
really impressed. I mean, I, I obviously from the outside looking in, I'd watched some games. I was I was aware. I'd done a lot of research. Obviously, spoke to some key people, and I was aware of what this club has done in the last few years in terms of bringing players through. It's only when you see a player day to day, um, real quality. But you know, the biggest thing's been the, the mentality of the players. It, apparently, it's a Charlton thing compared to maybe some academies down here. There's, there's something about them. There's a, there's a steel about them. There's a there's an arrogance when they go on the pitch in terms of like where they belong, and that's that's the argument with the biggest thing as you can play. You know, you can be as good as you can coming through the levels, and you get to the big arena and maybe can get on top of some people. So that's the biggest thing. Tyrese Campbell is a brilliant example today. He weren't in the squad the other night. Uh, I felt he needed 90 minutes in the under 21 last week, so he missed out on, on the one the other night. And then he comes into the team and he trained excellently yesterday. He just he just made an impression in the way that he trained, and I thought. You know, he's probably the only one we've got in the squad who can come in and replace what Corey gives us in terms of sort of one v one out ball to get you up the pitch. And obviously, his he's one v one ability when he gets against fullbacks, he's he's really impressed me. So, looking forward to seeing him play. Exactly the reaction you want when he's not been in the squad up at, up at Old Trafford. Talk to me now as well about the uh, the players that you've brought in. You know, Todd straight in today. There's McCauley as well. What are you looking for them to to bring to the squad? They obviously bring experience, but you know what, what does that really mean other than racking up a load of games? That, it's a personality that they bring. I spoke in detail to both players around, you know, what I expect from them. You know, we, we need big personalities to come in to, to to add to what we've got, and we need people to come in and set the standards every day and to push the standards. Number two have obviously played at a higher level recently, which is I think is important. Um, just to push, push the culture of the club, push me, challenge me and my staff to improve, because we have to improve from where we've been previously. So. You know that's away from the quality that they've both got. Todd's a fantastic technician, um, great set piece delivery, and uh, McCauley obviously the fans will know well he runs for the shirt. I wouldn't bring anybody in that wouldn't. Someone said about me, how pleased have you been with somebody that's so keen to come? Well, they wouldn't be at the club if they weren't absolutely desperate to pull that shirt on and, and add to what we've already got. So excited to see both of them today. And just the final one on the fans as well. Nine thousand went up at Old Trafford. They they really enjoyed the occasion. Important they treat this game like that as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, speaking to a few of them outside there, two days off work, two days off school. It's it's been a bubbly week compared to maybe in the previous months. Um, because they're all together as away fans, it's that's what creates it, doesn't it? That buzz. But there'll be probably just as many here today, maybe hopefully a few more. But they'll be dispersed around the stadium, so it's important that they. Yeah. All I would ask is for them to do, to do what they've done since I've come in, to really get behind the boys. There's no, no feeling like it as a player, but, you know, to hear your name being sung, to, to feel that energy when you go and hit a big tackle and you can hear that roar behind you. So, no, they'll be with us. We've got to make sure we give them something to shout about. There's a different feel already in the last couple of weeks, Dean, I can tell you that. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers, Scott. Well, I love the way he talks as well, talking about challenging him and, you know, you can see he, he's very much at it. And I think it's a good mixture of old school as, to new school as well. But three changes from Tuesday. Todd Kane straight in. He makes his Charlton debut. Jack Payne and Tyrese Campbell also in for Sean Clare, Albie Morgan and Corey as well. Uh, Macaulay Bond is on the bench. And Brownie, look, the temptation after what's happened in the last few games, plus on Tuesday as well, is to keep the same side. But, but that's the manager who's got the experience of knowing that it doesn't always work like that, does it? It doesn't always work like that. It's been a tough week. Uh, I expected changes. I, sometimes, uh, you know, you, you get surprised. And today I'm surprised. I thought, I thought we might see... Cessignon, you know, is one who struggled to get through three games. I thought Innes is another one that struggled in, in the past to get through three games in a week. And it's great to see them both in the squad actually mm. and playing. It tells me that there's a progression there and fitness levels are increasing. And certainly with Ryan, there has been far less injury, uh, you know, incidents this year than, than in previous seasons. So that's great to see. I think if you're looking at it as a squad, <clears throat> the fact that Kane's gone straight in means he's physically ready to go straight back in. Um, and maybe Macaulay Bond's not, and we know he's had a tough time at QPR, and maybe physically he's come in and trained and he's not quite been at the levels maybe I Dean mean, wants to see. I think it's also difficult to say, Miles, you, you're not playing, isn't it? Well, the, the only reason you leave Miles out today is, is because he's shattered. Yes. That's it. Absolutely. Otherwise he plays. Uh, you mentioned Tyrese Campbell who's come in as well, Ali. And I, I loved hearing him say that. I didn't have him in the squad. I felt he needed a, a 90 minutes in the under-21s. And then yesterday in training, he was brilliant. Yeah, some, some, of the, some of the things that Dean has spoken about over the last few weeks seem to me the, the perfect way for him to approach this job. Uh, sometimes you go into a club and there's a feeling that you're going to have the time to build something and, and that's not necessarily the case with Dean Holden and his staff. And he seems completely aware of that, but rather than moan about it, he is he's so front-footed with his approach 
and I, th I think it must be breathing a lot of confidence into the players because everything he says, it's not l laden with cliches. It feels like it's got substance and you kind of believe what he's talking about. And if we sit here and we like the sound of it, then I'm sure the players themselves do too. So that, that's a great message. He, he's obviously someone, and he showed it at Bristol City as well, who's very happy to give young, talented players the chance, even if they don't have a ton of experience under their belts. And that can be risky for a manager to do as well, because the easy option is to go with experience. So I, I really like some of the, the things that he's done in the last few weeks, and, and this is just another one of them. It's just a team, I think, with, with a nice balance, because you've got the technical quality in the centre of midfield, but also with those two wide players, a real 1v1 ability. And that sort of mixed style, I think, is really important when you to try and win games at this level against tons of different types of team. Absolutely. Let's go to the, uh, the table then, shall we? And great to say that we can only look at the top half because we just nicked into there, uh, both ourselves and Barnsley. We jumped five places to 12 with last weekend's win over Lincoln and we could jump another place if we win an extra lose at home to Forest Green. Nine points off the relegation zone, nine points from the playoffs. Barnsley in that final playoff place. Uh, we can go within six points of them if we win, although they will have two games in hand at the very top. Look, Plymouth, they keep on winning, don't they? Or, or certainly keep on that gap between themselves and the rest. They enjoyed three straight wins over Christmas, held to a goalless draw by Bolton last time out. Sheffield Wednesday now second, and congratulations to them for knocking uh, Newcastle out of the FA Cup. And Brownie, back into the top half, our bid on goals scored, but psychologically that helps a lot, doesn't it? Absolutely, it doesn't matter. You know, we, we haven't got to put the bottom half up first, which is lovely, you know. And, uh, and it gives you and Curbs the opportunity to be the half glass full again and chase down that sixth, which yeah. you, you, you always keep we'll, to we'll, do. We'll, we'll get you there as well. Don't worry about that. I'm, at some I'm point. optimistic at the moment. Okay. This is about as optimistic as I can get I like how we it. are at the moment. Uh, Ali, look, just on the rest of the table as well, on the top half, we saw MK Dons make a late charge for the almost seemingly sewn up two last season. Do you feel that, that Derby or Bolton could challenge the top three? I don't think so. That's not to say they aren't good teams, but I think both the, the gap in points in the table currently and also the, the incredible strength and consistency of the top three um, probably means that, that I think that'll be the top three at the end of the season. But as you say, you, every single season in all three EFL leagues, what the table looks like in January is nothing like what the table looks like in May. And I, I seem to always come on here, I think it must be really boring every time I say this, but I always implore Charlton fans not to focus too much on the league position at any point in the season, basically until final day, because, you know, as, as we know, if Charlton lose today, they could drop six places. The worst thing to do would then decide everything's doom and gloom again because you're 18th rather than 12th. For, for me, if you enjoy what you're seeing, if you believe in that what you're seeing is, is the right thing, is exciting football, and you can see that the decisions being made by the manager and his staff seem to be positive, then, um, then th that's the thing to focus on rather than the, the league position at this stage. OK, well, when you're on next, we won't have the table up for <laughs> you there, Ali. <laughs> Let's have a look at the fixture list, shall we, in, in League One. Ten games this afternoon. Cambridge Morecambe was called off yesterday. Another game contested on Monday night. That's Port Vale against Peterborough. And uh, look, Ali's already alluded to it as well. Look at that game uh, at Portman Road. Ipswich against Plymouth. Or second place, Sheffield Wednesday face a tough-looking trip to Wickham. Some game that... Yeah, and if you're Sheffield Wednesday, you're looking at that fixture between Ipswich and Plymouth, going, I wish we weren't at Wickham away, because that <laughs> is a killer. Yeah. Uh, everyone, you know, we all know that Gareth Ainsworth and that side are very difficult to beat there. So in, in that respect, if they pull out a win today, that's a fantastic win and shows you the strength in, in depth that Sheffield Wednesday have, because I, I, I think they are going to challenge. I, I've said this all along, I'm slightly uh, more optimistic about Derby's chances than... Ali is. I, I, I think the way I think they're going to spend a bit of money. You know, I like the manager. Yeah. They brought him in. They don't concede goals. They've got the tightest league in. Uh, sorry, tightest defence in this league. And I think they might by the end of the season be pushing. But it is a hell of a gap at the moment. Yeah. Hell of a gap. Paul Warner, former teammate of mine. I certainly hope he does it. He goes straight up, and we get into the playoffs. That would be nice. Okay. As always, let's uh, take a, a quick break from today's show we can get to club news updates and we start with ticketing news after today we've got one more home game to come in january that's bolton saturday the 28th that game kicks off at the earlier time of 12:30 gmt tickets on sale now they're available for our two home fixtures in february also uh, against fleetwood on the 11th and sheffield wednesday on the 25th and tickets for all three fixtures can be bought by visiting booking.cafc.co.uk 
Fans are reminded that the EFL's live streaming regulations have been reimposed, meaning that only supporters outside of the UK and Ireland are permitted to watch today's game live on Charlton TV. If you are watching on social media and are overseas, or you have a means of making yourself appear overseas, then you can purchase a live stream match pass for just £10 now from CAFC.co.uk. Three hours of listening to Brownie. What more could you want for a tenner? Oh. That, that's, you've got to pay us for a tenner, Ooh. not we pay you for a tenner. The, the, tough, that. <laughs> uh, the club will be hosting its annual PSA testing day at the Valley ahead of our home game against Fleetwood on Saturday, February the 11th. The fixture is also the club's annual Men's Health Awareness Day. And as part of the match day, supporters in both clubs can get a PSA blood test at the stadium. The test is a blood test that measures the amount of prostate-specific antigen, hence the PSA, in your blood to help diagnose prostate problems, including prostate cancer. And to find out more and to book your test, please visit cafc.co.uk. I'm going to do it. I'm going to persuade Curbs, as always, to do it. Brownie, you can do it. We did it. That was last year. Yeah, I got like, I got a five-year exempt. I was, I honestly, I had the email. Check, I check the email. every year, I, Stevie no, Browning. No, I had the email from last year's test that said I didn't have to do it until 2025. There's, there's, there's a shock. You buck in the Viking trend, Viking warrior DNA, that's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> The club will be hosting its annual PS... Sorry, uh, Charlton Athletic <laughs> Unity Trust is launching a new food delivery scheme to provide families unable to access existing food support services due to housebound or needing additional care with weekly food packages directly to their homes. Uh, due to the ongoing cost of living crisis, the demand for free food support is now outstripping supply across the UK. CAC sees the reality of this situation every day across Greenwich and Bexley, where its own food club at the Valley in Charlton is now at capacity. If you need support or are able to provide support, please visit cafc.co.uk to find out how you can get involved. Well, later this month, the club and the trust will host its first ever Football versus Homophobia Week in partnership with the club's LGBTQI plus supporters group, The Proud Valiants. The club's affiliated LGBTQI plus friendly team Charlton Invicta and the University of Greenwich. Uh, the week aimed at promoting equality and fighting homophobia in football would include a host of activities beginning with the women's first team's championship fixture at home to Lewis on Sunday, January the 22nd and ending with the men's first team's home game against Bolton the following weekend. In each of the last six seasons, the club has run a football versus homophobia match day but this year will be the first time that a whole week has been dedicated to the initiative. And finally, the Charlton Athletic women's team were delighted to confirm the signing of midfielder Alex Hennessy on a deal until the end of the season on Wednesday afternoon. Alex links up with Karen Hills' side, having recently departed from Barclays Super League side West Ham. A big welcome to the club, Alex. OK, we're well, staying with the uh, women's team now and uh, Karen Hills' side made it six wins on the bounce with victory against Crystal Palace on Wednesday night. Uh, let's take a look at the action. Have the chance to try and launch something on the counter-attack. Red shirt swarming forward. AC flicks it on, gets to the second ball herself, pulls it back, there's the chance and there is the opening goal. Emma Follis puts Charlton ahead. Just a narrow lead that Charlton have here. Crystal Palace now they're still in with a shout. Oh, that's nice play. Charlton looking to put this game to bed. Got options to her left and to her right. Here's Aisi with the chance to cross. Pulls it back, a shooting opportunity and that is a tap in for Bell. It's 2-0, game set and match. Charlton heading for victory. That is six wins out of six for Karen Hills' side. Four wins before Christmas, two after. They've picked up where they left off. OK, let's go back to the men's team now, shall we? It's, of course, January. We're in the window. Uh, before we talk about the two signings that we've made, how have you made, what have you made of the League One January window so far, generally? Uh, I think there's still quite a lot still to do. Uh, there's loads of movement in terms of loans, people being recalled and sell, sent elsewhere. Sometimes the parent clubs leave that really late in the window, and so I think it can be quite disruptive for, for clubs at this level. Uh, even today, Barnsley have got a player on the bench called Bobby Thomas, who until this morning was a Bristol Rovers loanee on loan from Burnley. They've taken him out of Rovers and sent him to Barnsley. So there's quite a lot still to come. Um, there's been a few clubs uh, very active. Argyle in particular seem to be trying to avoid what happened to them last season, where 
second half of the season, they just really struggled to, to keep a grip on things, having lost a couple of players and having had Morgan Whitaker recalled by Swansea. They've decided to, to respond kind of strongly and they've added a, a ton of players to their team, including one I like a lot in Jay Matete. So Argyle, probably the, the most notable so far. And of course, Moneybag, Zipswich Town. They're, uh, they've thrown seven figures at Nathan Broadhead to try and you know, finish the chances that they're creating and, and get them up. OK, well, we haven't done quite that, but we have got two players in. Let's hear from the first, shall we? Uh, Macaulay Bond. In the league, we've won the last two, having had a, a disappointing run before that. Is this a good time to be coming into Charlton, do you feel? Yeah, it's on the up. It's like, there's, a, there's a good feeling about the place, and I said I want to be part of it. And Barnsley to come on Saturday here at the Valley. Are you fit, ready, and hoping to be involved? I'm ready to go. I've been like a cage animal for the last six weeks, only six, we'll say it, six months. Just itching to go, not getting opportunity. I feel like I'm the first opportunity I get, I'm ready to put the ball back in it. And what's it going to mean to you walking out the tunnel again for the first time in, in a Charlton shirt again? Yeah. No, I mean a lot. Cause obviously, this is, I've got a lot of respect for this club. They did. They helped me get up, back up the ladder and they, they respected me enough to give me the chance of playing for them back in, a few years ago. So now I think it's about time I show some respect back and obviously go out there and perform well. And do you feel actually just on that, do you feel like in some ways you, you owe this club something? Massively. Yeah, they, like, in certain ways they changed my life for me. Like I come from playing non-league to the championship. But it, and they, they took the hit on me when no one else would. So, yeah, I've got a lot of respect for the club. All by what's been said, said in the past and that, me being me, a bit hot-headed, but no, none of it was ever meant, like, towards to disrespect the club and that whatsoever. Just, obviously, emotions were high. Things have always, don't always go to plan. And I was just, that's me saying, like, look, I've got a lot to prove here and hopefully I can prove it to the fans here over the next, however long I'm here. And when that interest from us to you did come back around, was that sort of fire in your belly straight away to, to come back in? Massively, because like I said, I left here on a good record in the championship. Personally, 11 goals in just, on, just over 30 appearances. And since then, I haven't really hit, I hit that form yeah, last season, at the start of the season, but I haven't really had that form since leaving here. So I feel like hopefully I can get back to that form and, like I said, put some good use out there on the weekend. Yeah, great to hear from Macaulay there, and you can uh, watch and listen to his interview in full on cafc.co.uk. And look, Brownie, a striker through the door, someone the fans will know well. Yep. You like the look of that? Yeah, I think you've always got to bring in before you let go, you know, and, 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 and by bringing Macaulay in, you've strengthened the front line, and it, it maybe gives the opportunity, you know, Kirk's not even on the bench today, maybe there's some movement on that. Uh, there has been rumours about Jaden. Moving on, I don't know whether they're true or not, but at least if you've got Macaulay in and somebody does make an offer, there's, you can manoeuvre in and out. So it, it's a good signing. You know, here's a notion, don't have social media or certainly don't comment on the social media if you're a player. Either way. And then I don't you won't know have why to, they're on it. And then you won't have to clear it that. up, will you? Absolutely. I, mean, I, Absolutely. I don't know why players do that. Look, Ali, since Macaulay left us, it didn't quite happen for him at QPR, mm -hmm. but the first half of last season at Ipswich, he was very good. Yeah. How good was he and what made him so good? Well, for three months or so, it seemed like he finished every single chance that fell to him. I think it was 11 goals by the start of November, but uh, only one after that. And he played quite you know, a similar amount of minutes after November. So um, someone who I, I, off the back of that and from what I've seen over the last few years, would consider a confident striker. And that can be viewed negatively. He, has, he is someone who's had some some kind of dry spells in front of goal, it's fair to say, but we've also seen him when he's in rhythm, when he's confident, um, he can finish his chances really well. And even if he isn't, he does give you that energy, he runs the channels really well, and, and I think he's a, a very hard worker. I think, crucially, he's got something to prove. And I think for a January signing, that's really what I'm looking mm. for. These are his goals, or some of his goals, that he scored the first time round in the Charlton shirt. And, and look, if he can get his eye in, because there are different types of goals, Brownie, he could be a really important addition. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, and, and look, we, we were being sold something at the start of this season that we've not been able to do as a team. Um, and, and he does offer something in that front position where he can close down and he can shut down and he can work across the back four and cause a bit of grief. We can talk about goals, but there's more to his game than just the goals. He does work his socks off. He does work the channels. Um, and, and so you've got, to, you've got to add that into uh, the conversation as well. You know, I think that's one of the reasons we brought him back here is more mobility across the front line. OK, a good first signing. Let's talk about our second. But again, let's hear from him first, Todd Kane. You've played a few times here before. We were just saying off camera. Um, what are your memories of playing at the Valley? Uh, last time we were playing here, I scored. Um, it was for Oxford. And, uh, yeah, it was, um, that was a nice memory, scoring a goal. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm wearing a Cholton shirt this time. 
So hopefully I can get another goal and celebrate in front of the home fans. And for Charlton fans who haven't seen you before, what type of player is Todd Kane? Uh, I'm an attacking player. Um, I like to get crosses into the box and uh, you know get some shots and um, you know I'm aggressive in in tackles and I'll give 110 percent for the badge and for the fans and um, yeah you know sometimes if I'm having a bad game I'll still uh, you know work my nuts off and go from there. It's fair to say you've maybe been a little bit in and out at Coventry so far this season. In the last few years you've been you've played regularly at Championship level. Why have you decided to? to drop a level down to League One? Um, from the start of the season, uh, obviously, it was very frustrating for me. Um, commentary, they picked up some great results. Um, and it's only natural that, you know, they're, they're going to play, play the team that's been doing really well. Um, so for me, it was most important to play games and um, come somewhere where I feel I was um, wanted and I can help the team. Um, spoke to the manager. He was very pleasing and uh, I've had no numerous conversations in the past with him um, and I just had a nice feeling about it and uh, yeah I feel that the time of, you know right now um, it's it's most important to, to be happy and to enjoy my football again and this is uh, the right place for me I believe. Yeah great to hear from Todd then his interview is also available on caefc.co.uk and, and Ali a lot of Charlton fans won't know too much about Todd James the, the director was showing us some goals that he scored some good goals as well for Hull yeah. um, I spoke to Mike Robbins he said he's a great lad that he loves to get forward what do you say about him yeah I'd say uh, a, a, another really good squad pickup um, certainly the fullback areas have been not necessarily areas of weakness, but areas of uncertainty at times this season for Charlton. A lot of that is down to injuries, but also the way that the squad was built in the summer. So I think Kane comes in, and as, as the fact that he's been put straight in the team shows, there's minutes there, there's, there's a chance for him to impact the team. I see him as a, a pretty solid all-rounder. I don't think he's the most unbelievable attacking fullback who's going to whip incredible crosses in you know, ten times a game, but I just see him as a really solid performer, very experienced, unlikely to let you down. Uh, and he's and he's been playing most of his career at championship level. So, um, you know, add to that the fact that he as well seems like he's looking for a place to, to, to call a home and he's looking for a manager and a, a squad of players to really fit in with. Uh, I think this is a, a, another good pickup. Yeah, it's a great opportunity, isn't it? And, and when everyone's fit, we're strong at right back, aren't we? Yeah, I, I wonder if that's why he's been brought in. He's got a more defensive minded brain than perhaps Sean. And it's not a dig at Sean. Sean's done an incredible job filling in for us at right back and at right sided centre half but he's not naturally gifted when it comes to seeing danger as a defender. I wonder if Todd Kane is going to give us that more defensive-minded solidity as a right-back. He does love to get forwards. That, that's, well, that's his main thing. He's going to have to run fast then. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've got to go something to catch Jez. But what, what I would say is, is, is that both the signings have come down. Whereas if you look at the summer signings, we were, we were signing up from League Two, we're now signing players that have got experience in the Championship, which I think is a good thing. Absolutely. So just over two weeks of the, the window to go, where else do we need to strengthen? I, I don't think we're done this window. I think there's, there's one or two more bits of business to be done. I think we've got a, I, I, I don't want to use the word Deadwood, but we, 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 the players that aren't playing, that have become stale, a bit stagnant, they need to be moved on for their own careers. And that, that should leave uh, uh, you know, a gap in terms of wages to bring a couple more in. Mm. I look at that midfield, is, is there a case of a bit more mobility in the midfielder and people go, oh, we, we're loaded with midfielders, yeah, but we may be able to let one or two go yeah. and then bring a more, a more mobile midfielder in. Um, naturally, naturally left-sided defender, perhaps, you know. Lucas has done a great job but we, and, and, and Stephen's done a good job at fullback, but a naturally left-footed player to give us a bit more balance, mm. maybe. We shall see what happens. Uh, what I would say is now is a good time to do it because there's a real feel-good factor, isn't there? Um, what's happened in the league in the last couple of games and also a fantastic performance at Old Trafford, which we'll come on to in just a second. Now, you mentioned Lucas mm -hmm. Ness. I think he's been absolutely superb since he's broken into the first team and I spoke to him a little bit earlier on. Lucas, good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Um, let's look back at Old Trafford. Uh, amazing, wasn't it, despite the results? You still pinching yourself? You played there? Yeah, I mean, it's the stuff of dreams, really. Um, stepping out onto that pitch, seeing the amount of people in the crowd watching us, I can't really explain it. I don't think it's really sunk in yet. And, um, yeah, if you, if you would have told me that would have been me three months ago, I would have laughed at you. 
Uh, it's just a crazy experience. Certainly. I mean, when were you told that, that you were going to be in the side and were you nervous just before kickoff? Uh, so we were told actually in the hotel before we left. Uh, so not, not too far in advance. I think the GAF wanted us to all, you know, have the right mindset going into it, which is fair enough. And yeah, obviously I was, I was a, bit, a bit nervous, um, as expected. But yeah, once you step out on the pitch, you, you get into the game, make a few passes. You sort of it settles the nerves and, and yeah, I just played, played my game. Nerves can be a good thing if you channel them in the right way. I mean, were you able to enjoy the game or were you too focused on Alanga, Anthony and then Marcus Rashford when he came on? No, like you said, yeah, you have to, you have to stay focused. These players, like, you turn off for, for a millisecond and they're, you know, they're off your shoulder and they're, they're through on goal. So you have to stay so, so focused. But, yeah, um, well, once I settled in, it was sort of, like, time to relax and, and I could enjoy myself. Coming away from it, and, and again, it's not fully sunk in, but what do you feel you, you can learn from an experience like that where you stood up to Manchester United? Um, I'd say playing in front of that crowd was massive. Um, it's by far the biggest crowd that I've played in front of. And um, the, actually the Portsmouth game was, was the, the one before that, so which was 20,000. And I don't actually know how many people are at Old Trafford, but it's probably quite a jump. So that was, that was something that I was new to. And also you're playing against world-class players. Like I said, like you have to stay so switched on. And that was a really good experience for me. And talking generally now, it's amazing, isn't it? You have only been in the first team for a couple of weeks. And when you think about where you were at the start of the season as well, how far do you feel you've come? And, and do you feel comfortable? You look comfortable playing first team football. Um, I, I'd say I'd, I'm starting to feel comfortable. Um, I think at the start, you know, my first, my first league start, I think was about six weeks ago. I was nervous and I was sort of playing with a bit of fear, you know, didn't want to make uh, many mistakes, but I sort of, I feel like I've grown into it a little bit and that's um, getting used to the sur surroundings, you know, the, the players. Because it was only, I think, two or three months ago I was playing in the National League, so it's, it's quite different. But um, no, I'm happy with my progress. From National League to Old Trafford, yeah. back down to, to League One again today. Are you going to be as motivated against Barnsley as you were against United? No, definitely. And I think that's important. You know, it's a huge game. Um, Barnsley are in a good bit of form. They're obviously a bit higher than us in the table. And it's important that we, we, we sort of channel our motivation in the right way to, to get the three points today. Final one, back on United. Did you get a shirt? I did. Who's? I managed to get Zidane Iqbal, who's a, a youngster on the bench. Um, sadly, by, by the time I... Because I, I had a Man United fan in the crowd. So that was one of my mates. So I went and said hello to him. And by the time I got in the tunnel after, I sort of asked their kit man, saying, oh, like, whose shirt can I get? And there, there wasn't many left. So I just said, um, as long as you get me one, I'm happy. So yeah, I got well, that one. We'll watch out for him. Marcus Rashford had already given his uh, five away, yeah, probably. Yeah, exactly. Listen, well done. Keep up the good work and good luck today. Thank you. Appreciate it. He'll learn from that if he plays at Old Trafford again. Forget about your mate. Go straight and get your shirt and then, and then <laughs> move on. But look, the performance, the experience that he gained from that, Brownie, I thought was... He was one of our best players. Sensational. Yeah, and, and do you know what? He's come back from a, a loan deal in the National League, which, which does make you grow up quite quickly. You have to fend for yourself. But he's coming, and what I like about him is he's quite versatile. We went from a back four to a, a back three, and he was left as the left-sided centre-half all on his own in the last 15, 20 minutes, and he was <laughs> exposed to some very good players, yeah. and he dealt with it. And he had to get out, out into the channel and make some challenges late on in that game. And when he made them, it was a struggle for him to get back up. He's got a big heart. I'm telling you, he's got a massive heart. And, uh, and I like the way he reads danger. We've already done that on this show, where you can see him moving towards knockdowns and people just about get shots off. I'm liking what I see, but like every young player, got to develop. Absolutely. You know, but the, the, the fundamentals are there. But he looked very comfortable. Temperament-wise at Old Trafford, he looked comfortable on the ball. And there was one run that he came back. He didn't even get the ball, but he sensed danger. He talked about sensing danger. Yeah. He knew what he wanted to do. It looks like he's got an old head on Young's shoulders. And, and Ali, we're, we're thinking of starting a petition on Charlton TV to nickname him Alessandro Nesta. You like that one? <laughs> yeah, I don't mind that at all. I, I think that's a strong nickname and a, a strong goatee he's no got as well. <laughs> What's the goatee? The goatee's minging, isn't it? I want to tell him because it's terrible. He's 20. He can I know, he can do what he likes. Yeah. He can do what he likes. But I, I definitely do you know much of him, though? Uh, see much of him? I, 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 
first came to my attention when he got whipped back from Torquay and stuck straight into the first team. And, uh, you know, you, you figure that, that someone's kind of being thrown into the deep end, but for, by all accounts is, uh, you know, held a very, very high standard. I, I'm always just looking for partnerships, really, when it comes to centre-back. Yeah. So if you've got Innes, who, with his physicality, can be a really good, strong front-foot defender, if you've got Ness, who's, who reads the game really well, that, for me, seems like a good combo. I like him a lot and, and I think absolutely if he keeps his head down then he's got a very good chance of playing at a high level. Look, well, well, we, let's have a look at the Man U game and you can carry on talking about him well, if you want. It's nice to see a manager letting players get a shirt after a game because curves wouldn't let you. <laughs> 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 but the game itself, yeah. um, I thought the performance was really, really good. Obviously not the result that we wanted. I mean, you were up there, Brownie, as well, yeah. weren't you, working for, uh, for radio? I have a slight criticism over that goal. In, 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 I know it's Blackett Taylor, and I know he's not defensively minded, but if he'd have just come out and shut that down a yard to his right, then he wouldn't have got the shot away, Anthony. It is an exquisite shot, and it's, it's you know technically it's wonderful, and, and Ashley may not brew no chance. But, but then we could have collapsed, couldn't we? 1-0, yeah, and, and, and we didn't. We didn't. If that had gone in... It could have been altogether a different story, but it didn't. And do you know what? From that point, we kind of grew, mm. you know, and, and Man United had one or two chances, as you would expect them to do as the home side, but we grew in the second half. And this was a great chance just after that half time, was, wasn't it? Yeah. That Hit was, the target. That was our best opportunity of the, of, of the game pretty much up to that point, and he just needed to get over the top of it, Scott Fraser, and he didn't. But yeah. um, was that, that was a foul. <laughs> uh, we called that in commentary. That was 100% a foul. I mean, I read some, some, some comments after the game about... This is a wonderful save, I think, isn't it? Yeah, that's one of the two he makes second half. I think, I think the second one he makes low down is even better yes, than that. Agreed. Because it's close proximity and it's low. It, not, it really is difficult to throw your body straight down and get a strong arm out and push it around the post. It's coming now. But, yeah, I, I, you know, you have to have your keeper making these saves. It's come through bodies. He's Brilliant. seen it late. It's a wonderful save. When you go to Man United... You have to have your keeper make one or two saves like that. And how about a massive compliment? Ericsson, Casemiro and Marcus Rashford coming on. Yeah, and Casemiro's got a passing range like mine, so he should go a long way. <laughs> have you seen in, them? In, in, in what world do you live in? <laughs> What's the colour of the sky in your world, Brownie? Four days later, he's just scored the winner in the Manchester right. derby, so it shows what sort of form what, he's in. This ball's a bit of a... Uh, well, there's, there's, has, it, has it just done a diagonal? This ball's an absolute joke. <laughs> was he off? He looked no, off. he was off, actually. Yeah, he was off, but it's still a great first touch. Yeah. His position is, is brilliant. You know, if you flip that from our perspective, something for our defenders to be wary of, good centre forwards will, will, will play in between you and they'll work off the shoulder so there's no response time. It was an exquisite first touch and an, an even better finish. Um, but you expect that at the top level. Just, uh, it's impossible to shut him up, isn't it? Uh, just as we're hearing the, the fans loud because the players are coming out, just listen to this as well, because, you know, the fans at Old Trafford, Nothing short of superb. It's, it's a great reminder of the potential of this club, you have to say. And, and travelling up, 9,000 of you, when there was a, you know, couldn't get back on the trains anyway. Nothing short of superb. The lads are out now, ahead of today's game. Um, let's remind ourselves of the teams as well, because... It is three changes from Tuesday. In terms of Barnsley, though, Ali, t tell us about them. Yeah, I mean, they're a team that I, I see as a team who have got a very consistent shape and a pretty consistent core, but actually quite a few changes today that me and Brownie have been kind of raising our eyebrows at. And I guess it's potentially very good news for, for Charlton. So uh, Mads Anderson is, is back. He's their captain, back from suspension, very strong at centre-back. A lot of midfield players who can look after the ball um, and, and Phillips who can break forward and, and, and is a threat from range. Uh, and, and they're looking a little light up top, to be honest. So that's positive news for Charlton, albeit this is just on paper and, and who knows what will happen. Yeah, I mean, the one player they got up front, Devante Coe, I'm, I'm cursing us here, right? As only scored Don't two, two away say. goals in 32 games. You know, so if that's, if, the, if as predicted from what we can see, he's a lone striker. Andy I think Cole's it, son up front for them and Carl Lieburn's son, son up front yeah, for Charlton. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, it's brilliant, isn't it? I saw Andy at a charity event. Um, what day are we? Saturday, Thursday. I, I'm losing it. We're still, I'm still in Christmas mode, to be honest with you. Today, for me, Brownie, all about mentality after what happened at Old Trafford. Yeah, do you know what? We've just got asked a prediction over the other side of the, in the lounge, and I, I actually went for a nil-nil because I just think I think a clean sheet's really important for us. Maybe there's a bit of a lag from Tuesday. Maybe we'll, we'll wait and see. I think I think Dean summed it up quite perfectly in as much as you don't have a machine to measure what's coming right now. They've done the best they can to prepare. Let's hope we get, uh, you know, 90 minutes that we have been getting, which is from start to finish. What did you say, Ali? 
I think it'll be good fun. 2-2 uh, two, two for me. OK, both of you going for draws. I'm, I'm going to go for a, a very boring 1-0 win. Good. I hope so. I'll I hope take you're that. right. Uh, so do I. You hope win, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Oh, look, there's a re- is a real good feel-good factor after what's happened in the league uh, in the last couple of games and also Old Trafford. It was a wonderful performance. It wasn't a 3-0, even though United were the better side.